what is the hardest thing about Hyrox? There's quite a few things and we're going to cover them all in this video and let us know which ones you can relate to the most. And hopefully after this video, you'll be leaving feeling more confident about your race. So the hardest thing then at the very beginning is to actually press that button and book yourself onto your first Hyrox race. Well, partly one of the hardest things is getting tickets now. But yeah, if but you do get a ticket, the first thing in your head, you have to be thinking, I'm prepared yeah. to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Let's book it. That, when yeah. you haven't done it before, that is scary. Yeah, that is, is scary to do until you've done it and yeah. you put it in, done it. Once you've got it, you'll be like, all right. Or book a race. Don't just book high rocks. If you can't get on high rocks, book a race because you need that adrenaline. You need that feeling of how a race feels, I yeah, think. Yeah, get used to that feeling of not competitiveness, a little bit competitive, but... It's race, maybe racing with others, mm. especially if you're used to just training by yourself or doing the odd class. It's very different to when you then go, right, we're actually, we're doing it. That for a lot of people can be really hard and a lot of people will just delay doing it, delay doing it thinking, I'll, I'll book onto it when it comes up again next time because I'll be fitter. I'm not fit enough to do it. And then you never book on anything. Then a year goes by and you're going, well, if I just get a bit better at running, and then it will be, oh, if I just get a bit stronger, there'll always be an excuse not to book it. So the easiest way around that is as soon as they come up for sale, book a ticket, get on, get involved, and then worry about everything else afterwards. Yeah. So once you're actually booked that race, so the training, training's as hard as you want to make it. They say train hard, race easy. They do. <laughs> Who's they? Who's they? <laughs> yeah, train hard, but get the balance right of training easy and training hard. So easy days, yeah. hard days, recovery days, you need that balance. If you think train hard, race easy, so you make all your training hard, you won't even make it to race day. So when it's hard, go hard. When they're easy sessions, the hardest part of easy sessions is being disciplined to make sure they stay easy. So once you've, once you've got into the swing of training and training, let's skip forward to the week before the race. So where does your head go the week before a high rocks race? Bearing in mind, I have to live with you for this week. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm terrible. I'm nervous. <laughs> the first one was the worst. And maybe the one that I wanted to PB out really badly. Yeah. Manchester 24. And we did. So if you've not watched any of these videos before, we beat our, a lot or took a lot of our time within a year. So we weren't runners. So we are literally amateurs to run in. And we've progressed massively. So our latest time in January 24th. So our first one was January 23rd. And our fifth one was January 24th. And we knocked off 10 minutes. So that's massive. So we ended up with an hour and 10 something. That one, because I wanted it so badly that I was a wreck. I was a wreck the weekend. But that's how I deal with it. That's how I know I'm going to perform. Because I all I do is think about the race. So I think there's, there's two things to that. There's one, when you haven't done the race before. So you don't really know what to expect. So that's a different feeling to when you then go in, I know how it feels, I know what it's going to be like, the pressure I'm putting myself in is now to be better. So start with the first one. Mm. So when we were doing our first one and we don't know anything yeah, really. You always think that the race, is, the race day is going to be different to your training or they're going to put something that's, that's not, that you've not seen before and they don't. Every, everything, especially with Hyrox, is so well ran. Yeah, it and is actually. Everyone's so supportive and everybody's doing their own thing. You worry about the toilet and if you don't worry about the toilet, you worry about dehydration, then you worry about tummy ache, then you worry about if you haven't got the right food and what do you eat during this and after that. And, and it's all silly. It's all so silly. And then if you're in the Hyrox community, don't watch it for a few days before because the scaremongering that seems to naturally go on with people like... People worrying. Worrying, which is... Great, Natural. because in a way it feels normal for me that I worried, but I would do, I wouldn't put things in there to put the fear of God in people, and I definitely, definitely won't be reading up until the night before. No, it's, the sleds it's, felt heavy. The sleds, you know, the sled pull. Oh, be careful on that. There's no chalk. Things that make you th feel sick isn't a good thing. Yeah, and rather than thinking, what if this happens? What if that happens? reframe stuff mm. what if it all goes really well what if it goes to plan what if it feels like training what if the atmosphere is amazing what if you finish the race and you really enjoy it yeah. it's focus on the good things rather than it's the negative the negative things <laughs> rarely happen and the worst case scenario yeah. what do you do you go oh there's no chalk all right oh, you, i just got on with it do you use chalk in training i no. guess most people don't so when you then go oh there's no chalk so how am i going to do the farm but then someone will comment 
It's hotter in the venue than it is in June. In venue. It is. <laughs> Honestly, if I went by the heat for January 23 event, what people said it was like, I would have gone naked, you know, the way they made you feel. But actually, it wasn't as bad as people said. It was hot. No, I'm not going to say it's not hot, but it's not actually... When people comment stuff and say stuff, it's always going to sound worse than potentially what it is. Mm. And when you're actually doing it, you don't really think about much. It's, it's, the, the, the issue here is all the thoughts in your head before you do it. So it's trying to deal with those thoughts before you do it and the best way to deal with them. Mm. And the best way I think to deal with them is try not to think about it too much. Yeah, be prepared. Be prepared with what you need to take and what you need to do. Yeah. And then don't worry about it. Go and enjoy it. Go and do it. So especially for your first one. I don't enjoy them though. <laughs> no, but you enjoy the feeling after. I so do, I do. That's why what's hard for some people isn't going to be hard for others. Yeah. So this is, this is the point of this video and there's going to be other things that we're going to say is hard and some people will go, that's not hard, that's easy. So some people will go, oh no, the build up to it, that's the fun bit, I enjoy that. The bit I don't like is after the race is done and we're going to come to that and explain on that. But the hard parts during the race, of course it's hard, it's supposed to be hard. If you don't want it to be hard, take it easy. Yeah, exactly. What's the point? They say though, if you find it comfortable and you get around and you're laughing and this, that, the other, you're not you're not trying so hard. But that's okay, that's for your race, so that's what you want to do. Yeah, race your race. We've done five events and we've done them where I got COVID the next day. You definitely had to co you had COVID two weeks before, we still did one. We've done one where we've knocked off minutes off of PB, one that we've gained an extra minute and you feel deflated. So we've done we've done all the little mini tests of how you the feeling side yeah. of things and what's good for us. This is no comparison. So the other thing, the hard part is the race itself. Yeah, it should feel hard, but it doesn't last. And before and you know it, before you end. know it, it's over. Oh you can't God. believe it. You've finished it. The end. The first four stations, being brutally honest as we are, are the worst bit. If you are pushing it, so to say. Then the next four, you actually start getting into the enjoyment. Then you think of the war balls, which I stupidly think of the war balls far too early, but you don't. Yeah, don't. And just then, think what you're doing in that moment and or what's next, and the, that's it. The best feeling is the ending. Tell and, us about the ending then. Is we'll come the to the end of it. What I'd say is once you've done the burpees, I'd say the burpees are the worst. Oh. When you're running around doing your laps, look at the people doing the burpees, because then you'll be thinking, I might be in a world of pain, but I've done the burpees. Yeah. And I, I actually think that helps. So there's, there's ways you can then get the Taking race. Taking pleasure in other people. <laughs> Taking pleasure in other people, feeling the pain, exactly that. Yeah, so the war balls, what the feeling you get once you've done them or while no, you're doing them. Working your way up for them. I start thinking about them halfway around. Oh, I've still got the war balls to do, still got the war balls to do. And I know, I'm assuming, yeah. comment if you, you feel the same as me on that one. But really what you want to be thinking is, you've only got 50 war balls to do when we're doing it as a doubles and we're splitting it and you're having a bit of a and rest. I get and to do them. That's what we have to say to ourselves. Get I to get do to do this. I get them able to do this. That feeling when you cross the finish line and you've done it, because at that point, you, for most people doing it, you won't care what time you've got. You're just glad it's finished and it's over. You might look back on it and go, oh, I'm really happy with what I've got or, oh, I wish I could have done it a bit quicker. That's what happens after the race. And this is the part that can be the hardest part for people. You've done the race. You've finished the race, you've left the venue, it's the following day, and you go, oh, and it's the High Rocks Blues. How oh, do you get that? No, because we'll get back on with our training and get on doing something else. Or yeah. we'll try and know that we're going to try and get on another race coming up. If you finish doing that High Rocks race and then you go, oh, that's it, it's finished, I've done it. And then you haven't got anything else to work towards, that can feel quite, mm, and you feel a bit rubbish. So it's then going, you're probably going to want to take a little bit of time off training, especially as a beginner. If you see some people and you go, how are they going, going doing a 5K run straight after the <laughs> Hyrox event? They're the same people doing a 5K run on the morning of the Hyrox event because it's the race is hard, but they do that much training. They're that yeah. fit. If you're a beginner, you're going to be resting up a bit before you race. And after the race, you're going to take a few days off because your legs are going to be killing. Especially mm. if you do the race and then you go and eat a load of rubbish, drink some beer, celebrate doing it. Yeah, your body's going to take even longer to recover. We don't do that. No, we don't, don't do that. Don't but drink. a lot of people, a lot of people will be because it's an achievement they've done. Happy days, yeah, celebrate it. The ones not? who are doing loads of races probably go right. I then need to eat this. I need to make sure I get this amount of sleep. I'm back on with my train. I'm doing this. When you finish it though, mm. and if you are a beginner to it, think about what you're doing next. Either think that you're going to book another high rocks race, or you're going to do another race, or just work out what the next block of training you're going to do and get into it. Have a few days just chilling or doing just a bit of random training. 
do some classes, do a bit of anything, then go, right, what is it I need to improve? And this is what a lot of people do, and this is why so many people love Hyrox. You get the splits of all your times. So then you can then go, well, actually, I'm ranked 100th for lunges. I'm not bad at them. And then you look at your rowing time, and you go, I'm ranked 1,200. <laughs> and then you go, actually, I'm pretty poor at rowing. Maybe I need to try and get a bit better on my rowing. Most people look at it and go, I need to get better. And it's also doing that in phases and you can't do everything at once. We've noticed that if you're proving you're running, you may have to improve your strength on another phase. Do, do it in stages. Yeah, that's how, a lot of the, that's how we, I do a lot of the training programs. Yeah. That's how we do it to get the most improvement when you're focusing on one We're thing you want to really develop. I am bringing out some new programs, which are uh, hybrid athlete programs, which they kind of work everything. And the goal beyond that is you increase everything all at the same time but you're only going to increase everything at a small amount. If you focus mainly more on one thing, you could increase that thing more than the others. So it depends how you like to do your training. But yeah, so th this video today was to go through things that you might find scary. Most of it isn't scary, it's in your head. but it's normal. It's completely normal to have those feelings that they're scary. Um, but embrace it, embrace it, enjoy it, do it. I never thought I'd do a competition, my first one being at 38. I never 37. thought I'd do anything that involved running. No, I didn't. And look at us now. There'll be loads of people If you like want that. to look back at what we've done, I've got my own YouTube channel that I shared when I just started running. That was back in 2022. And we've got, high, we've got Instagram as well. So follow us on Instagram. Mine's a bit more personal than mine. You'll see mine when you look at Hyrox workouts. But it'll give you a bit of an insight to how real my life is because I'm not a fitness trainer. I'm, I'm an accountant. And it'll give you an insight to what Steve gets up to as well behind the scenes. So yeah, I hope you found the video interesting. Check out loads more videos that we've done.